In the last video, I talked about how it is no easy feat to be a sequel to games that are what many consider to be titans. And that is true. Not many games live up to the standards of their predecessors. There are only like three titles that have managed to do so. God of War Ragnarok is in a similar spot. It is a sequel to a game that I consider to be among some of the best titles that I have ever played. It was such a spectacle to see an entire game getting played out in only one shot. The combat was flashy and brutal and the story was so simple yet so emotionally intense. It was after such a long time that we had a AAA game from a mainstream studio that had some meat on its bones. So clearly, God of War Ragnarok had some big shoes to fill. And when I first saw the announcement for Ragnarok in September of 2020, saying that the game was coming soon in 2021, I was very skeptical. Making a game like God of War Ragnarok in only 3 years for me, was a fool's errand. I thought that for this game, they would have made progression in the story, but make little to almost no changes in the core gameplay of the game. It was too short a time to make a sequel to a behemoth like God of War. And after playing through the entirety of this game, I must say, Santa Monica Studios pulled it off. I mean, what the hell? Cody Barlog, how did you do this? I mean, it's like nobody at Santa Monica Studios has taken a break in last three years. When compared to God of War 2018, Ragnarok is bigger, better, prettier, and most importantly, more fun. First of all, this game looks beautiful. At many times, I just stopped and took all the visuals in. Playing God of War Ragnarok is like stepping into a Nordic folklore. The creativity and all the different interpretations that the developer showed in this game were awe-inducing. The realm of Svartalfheim felt like what an actual dwarven city would look like with all its mechanical contraptions and small houses. The environment of all the different realms are distinct from each other and this feeling of uniqueness is reinforced with the gameplay with all the different realms having their own gimmicks. In Svartalfheim, these water geysers are used in puzzles to activate contraptions. In Alfheim, there are these walls from which your axe ricochets and you can use these in some really cool looking axe throws. If I throw here, it's... Oh! Oh! <laughs> Dear! Atreus! Look at this! Look what I did! <laughs> This doesn't do anything. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. These different realms also bring with themselves a huge number of enemy varieties, something which God of War 2018 struggled with. The only complaint I had with the old God of War was a lack of enemy variety and bosses. They repeated the same bosses way too many times in that game. But instead of having the same repetitive troll bosses like in God of War 2018, God of War Ragnarok boasts a number of different bosses, each being a formidable challenge, keeping the encounters fresh and exciting. In God of War Ragnarok, you can fight a bear. And then later you can fight as a bear. I mean for that alone this game should win game of the year. But apart from the good times where you fight as a bear, you get to fight as Kratos. And let me just simply say this. It's pretty good. The combat is more brutal and satisfying than ever before. The Leviathan Axe feels heavy. You can split someone in half with a charged heavy. You can still throw and recall your axe which never gets old. The Blades of Chaos can juggle enemies in the arena and are certified to be one of the coolest weapons in any game. With God of War Ragnarok, the developers have also given the shield some depth. Instead of just being for parrying and blocking attacks, like in the previous game, you now get to choose shields based on your playstyle. You can either choose a shield that favors parrying or a shield that has more passive usage by being able to absorb yellow circle attacks from the enemies. God of War Ragnarok also added the feature to zip onto smaller ledges rather than requiring Kratos to climb over them slowly. And you can seamlessly transition this into an attack and that feels so satisfying. The developers have also streamlined the RPG elements in this game and made it so that when you max out an armor, you can make it look like any armor you like. It's like Santa Monica Studios took a look at God of War 2018 and made every single feature of that game better, which for me is what a sequel should strive to do. Another big change that God of War Ragnarok did was making Atreus a playable character. The first time when the game gave me control to Atreus, I was scared. I thought that this game was going to pull off a Mary Jane on me. As I did in Spider-Man where after every two missions you have to slog through a 10 minute mission where you play as Mary Jane or as Miles where the game goes from being a superhero game to a hide and seek simulator. However, Cory Barlog knows how to make video game and playing as Atreus is somehow equally fun as playing Kratos. Where playing as Kratos makes you feel powerful and brutal, 
Playing as Atreus makes you feel agile and nimble. You are just surfing through the entire arena, kiting enemies and plucking them off one by one with your bow. The only nitpicking I can do for this game is its plot. The game does not have the intense emotional weightage of the previous game, but it is more entertaining to watch. Anybody need a snack? Kratos? Snack? I do not need a snack. Let me put it this way. If God of War 2018's plot was that of Up, Ragnarok's plot feels more like a blockbuster Avengers movie. Thor! Get down here! All father. Don't do that! However, the one thing I cannot nitpick is the voice acting. Kratos! These acting performances are some of the best that I have ever seen in video games, up there with Red Dead and Last of Us. With just the first scene, the acting of these characters pulls the player back in the world of God of War like they never left. God of War Ragnarok is a triumphing achievement in gaming and an example in both what a worthy sequel should be and what are the standards that a AAA title should strive to achieve.